I really like the Breitling Aerospace. In fact, it's a watch that I've lusted after on and off for a couple of years. And I'm always on the lookout for something that might be similar and kind of quench the thirst a little bit. These are difficult times. Salaries aren't going up and living costs are getting higher. So for me, it's not the right time to go out and splash a load of money on an aerospace. So I was quite excited when I found an alternative Swiss brand with an Annie Digi watch with similar functionality, an ETA movement, all titanium construction, sapphire crystal. I'm talking about the Satina DS Multi-8 in titanium. Here it is, let's take a look. So this is the Satina DS Multi-8 Anadigi. Uh, this is a full titanium watch, so titanium case, titanium bracelet. It's, uh, it's super lightweight, we'll put it on the, uh, on the scales later on. It's 100 meters water resistant, it's got a sapphire crystal. The movement inside is an ETA E49.351, very catchy name there I must say. But again, Swiss made, so um, Swiss movement, obviously it all kind of ties in nicely with the Swiss brand that is Certina. Lug width on this one is 22 millimeters and I measure the lug to lug around 51.8 millimeters. So taking a look a little bit closer at this one. So it's a kind of uh, slate gray dial. Um, you have the numbers printed around the edge. They are loomed. Uh, and then you've got two basic hands, no running seconds hand on this, uh, but you can configure that on the screen, which I'll, uh, I'll show a little bit later on. Uh, and then just says titanium, Swiss made, and then you have Satina 1888 with DS Multi 8 written on it. So quite a bit of text there. And of course, the digital screen does cut off some of the numerals. For me, uh, I don't really mind it. I still think it looks cool. Uh, my other half absolutely hates it. She's uh, very much of the opinion that once you see it, you can't unsee it. So uh, yeah, I think that's going to be very much something that you don't mind or something that's going to put you off the watch full stop but you'll uh, you'll have to let me know in the comments on that i think the movement must be quite thick because there's very little clearance actually between the sapphire crystal and the dial so the hands are really thin i'll just try and get them into focus there and there's no real raised sections on the dial it's, it's all very flat so i'm assuming yeah it must be quite a reasonably chunky movement maybe it's a result of having the digital display just in there that contributes to the overall thickness of the watch. So just looking uh, onto the sides, so on the right side here, obviously you have your crown. So you don't operate the crown how you normally would. Uh, you don't pull it out. There's no different settings there. Um, I'll run through it when you use the features of the watch, but these are all free pushers here. So typically for the functions, for example, like the stopwatch and timers, you'll use obviously start, stop and reset, just like you would with a normal chronograph. Um, and then this one is kind of like a, to change the functions and, and scroll through it. Uh, on the other side, uh, you just have this flat polished edge. It's nice polishing. Um, and of course, fingerprints on there as usual. So apologies for that, but very difficult to keep this one clean. I have had it on wrist for about a week. Um, in fact, maybe, maybe close to two weeks now. So uh, I've become quite familiar with the watch. Um, and actually it's, it's held up pretty well in that time. It hasn't scratched too, too badly at all. Uh, other finishing on the watch, um, you've got really fine brushing on the top here of the lugs and it's really good quality. I mean, really, really nice. Uh, it screams Swiss made and same on the bracelet. Uh, the color doesn't quite match between the bracelet and the case. I've seen this before a couple of times on titanium watches. I'm not sure why they struggle to get the color matching. Um, but the brushing, yeah, super fine on both. Polished center links on the bracelet. Uh, there's also just, uh, as you'll see here, this bezel just running around the dial, polished. The main function crown is engraved with DS, which is a nice touch. Looking a bit more at the bracelet. so. If you've had titanium bracelets before, they always feel a little bit cheaper than the stainless steel counterparts because they're so light. They feel kind of cheap, even though they're not. Uh, I quite I like it. It's, it gives exceptional comfort on wrist, but if you expect to have weight and you like the feeling of weight to sort of signal quality of a watch, then you'll struggle a bit more with this. Um, and then, yeah, there's a mold 
milled inner clasp, pressed outer, and the Satina logo just then at the bottom there. Case back is a bit of a strange one on this. Uh, so there's four screws holding it in, one in each corner. Uh, and there's some information on there, but nothing fancy, no decoration, and a kind of strange uh, protruding rectangle. It doesn't dig into the skin. I mean, it does look a little bit uncomfortable from this camera angle, but yeah, it doesn't dig in, but uh, I'm not sure why it was necessary. I'll have to pop the case back off at some point and just have a look and see what that's all about. And just looking at the weight of the watch there, 90.4 grams, that's size for my 17 and a half centimeter wrist. So super lightweight, like I said, crazy comfortable. What I wanted to do was talk through some of the features and functions uh, on the digital display. Obviously this is a negative display. Uh, I think it looks cooler, but it is obviously a little bit less legible. Anyway, so we're on time one and that's currently displaying and that is the current time that we have set on the analog. So you can effectively use this as a dual time watch. So time two, one tap at the center there. And for me, this is set to UK time. I've got friends and family back home um, that I like to catch up with and I like to keep track of what time it is there. Uh, so typically day to day, I tend to have time one as my uh, analog, time two as my digital, but you can switch them. Let's say I was uh, flying back home and on the plane, I wanted to make the change. There we go tap the button there so when you switch between time one and time two I think it just confirms the date just to see if you're changing date as you move between time zones um, but in this case yeah let's assume I'm not and let's say I'm now in the UK and I'm flying back again I can just easily switch back to time one back on to Canadian time so pretty easy there other functions so there's a timer which operates just as you'd expect, start, stop, hold it down, reset. There we go, there's a lap timer which does exactly the same except you just tap here and it will go up in laps and then you can scroll through your laps at the end by tapping this button once you've stopped. There is a countdown timer and then there's two alarms that you can turn on or off. So, and then there's a setup menu there uh, and then you can have the display off if you want to, or you can set it so you can display the day and date. You can have the date and week of the year, or you can have the day, month, and a running seconds. So there's, uh, yeah, there's loads of options with this, loads of configuration options, loads of different ways that you can set it up, and of course, lots of features in there. So pretty much anything you're gonna need to do on your watch, you'll probably be able to do with this watch. Oh, that's real good. So what do I really like about this watch? Well, the AR coating is fantastic. There's hardly any glare. A lot of the time, it doesn't look like there's even a piece of crystal there. So fantastic job on that for Satina. Uh, the functionality is excellent as we've been through the functions on this watch. Uh, and although the manual is ridiculously thick, to be honest, once you've sort of figured out the basics of the three pushers, it's quite easy to navigate and uh, set up. So the watch is extremely comfortable on the wrist. So yes, yeah, uh, super comfortable. It's really that lightweight. Uh, despite the fact it's a 42, it's so comfortable. It's easily the most comfortable 42 millimeter watch I've ever worn. And uh, it's why I love grabbing it and just wearing it day to day. It's starting to take the place of my uh, Seiko speed timer as a grab and go daily. So yeah, I'm really loving this. Obviously in terms of style and design, uh, I love the look of the watch, as I mentioned at the start of the video, I'm a big fan of the Breitling Aerospace. And I think this is in a similar vein, although it's obviously not a direct copy, it is very much its own watch. Next thing I've got to shout out is the finishing. Uh, I mentioned it earlier, the brushing on this is absolutely gorgeous. Really high quality, really fine, really silky. It's so well done. It's, um, it's definitely the best finish I've ever seen on titanium. Uh, and I had a, I've had a bull titanium chronograph um, and that wasn't a cheap watch. So yeah, really impressive again. And considering the price I paid, I feel like I've almost stolen it with, uh, yeah, with this quality. Talking of brand, uh, another pro is that you are buying from Satina. So uh, obviously they're part of the Swatch group now, but they're a historic brand. 
um, and they're to be respected in their own right. So it's still nice to feel a little bit of that history on your wrist. And finally, I mean, the biggest pro with this one is the price that I paid. If you can pick this up uh, on the used market uh, or go on to grey market retailers um, like Joma Shop and you can get this for, you know, around 300 US dollars, really, that is way too much of a watch for what you're paying. I mean, compared to the competition, obviously list price on this, I think was drastically higher, but uh, it seems to be an older piece that maybe they're clearing out of stock. So if you're gonna buy, this is the time to buy. And uh, at the prices you can pick them up for now, I absolutely 100% say you must go out and buy one if you like this watch. It's amazing, amazing value. But of course, it's not perfect. So let's take a look at the negatives. First thing I don't like is this cheap feeling pressed clasp. Quality's great on the rest of the watch and then I feel like this clasp is a little bit tinny uh, and it just doesn't really scream quality. The milled inner is, is absolutely fine, no complaints. Uh, it's well assembled, there's not a lot of wobble there, but yeah, just this cheap cheap pressed clasp, uh, only three holes of micro adjust. Uh, I think it just slightly lets the watch down a little bit. Second con, I think the case back was a missed opportunity. They could have done something really nice um, with this, nice embossing or uh, even just leveled it out and not had these strange sort of oddities and extremities poking out. It's a weird looking case back. Obviously, most of the time you've got it on your wrist and you don't pay much attention. But as watch enthusiasts, we do appreciate a good case back. So yeah, definitely a missed opportunity on this one. Next thing is the pushers. So I think the pushers could be a little bit more tactile. They're slightly spongy. They're obviously usable, but uh, yeah, they could definitely be better. Uh, final con on this is just the loom. So actually on the hands, the loom is pretty good. It lasts all night. You can tell the time uh, and I've got no complaints with that. I think it's, it serves a good purpose. On the dial, however, the numbers fade really quickly. And uh, for that, uh, I think it could have been improved. I think they could have done a couple more layers just on the numerals there to uh, to match the hands. But yeah, at least the uh, at least the numbers fade before the hands and not the other way around. As an aside, there is a really good backlight on this watch, so loom is definitely less of an issue than on other pieces. Yes or no? This is your last chance. No beating around the bush. So. What's my conclusion on the Satina DS Multi 8? Well, it's not the perfect watch, but then what watch is? I think for the money, and considering that I paid just under 300 US dollars to order this, it's amazing value. It's got loads of features, it's lightweight, I think it looks good. Uh, I don't have the OCD with the cut numbers from the digital screen. It definitely feels Swiss made. Um, it's got a great set of features. And to be honest, I really enjoy it. I, I can nitpick with my faults, but I don't have any major complaints. It was a really good discovery. I'm really happy I found it. And if you've been somewhat lusting after a Breitling Aerospace, then I would recommend trying to pick up one of these and see what you think. Ultimately, if brand cachet is everything to you and you have to have a Breitling, this definitely won't scratch that itch. But for me, I'm not so fussed on the brand. It was more just that I liked the style of the watch, the design, but I didn't realize that there was any viable alternatives. So I think that's why I found happiness with this watch. Um, I'd be really interested to hear your thoughts on, uh, on Satina, on the DS Multi 8, or on any other Breitling Aerospace alternatives that you might have encountered that I've definitely missed. Um, or any other feedback on the video, please leave it below. And if you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next one.